Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to cover navigation in a stencil application and we're specifically using the Ionic PWA toolkit uh, for these example videos I've been doing. And if you have been following the example videos so far, we have kind of covered navigation a little bit. It's been there in the background as, we, as we've been doing other things, but I did want to film a specific video just covering some uh, concepts we haven't touched on and just really just giving a general overview of how navigation works in an Ionic PWA application. So if you are just using the Ionic PWA uh, starter kit, uh, you'll have an app root file here that uses the Ion router. And it's important to note that there is also a generic stencil router that you can use uh, just for generic stencil applications. Uh, but since we are using Ionic in this stencil application, we're using the Ion router. And a lot of people watching this video might be familiar with the Angular style uh, routing, uh, if, you're, if you've used Ionic with Angular in the past. And so this might look somewhat uh, familiar here. And basically what we have is uh, we have the Ion router web component, and inside of that we have some Ion route components. And for each of these uh, components, the ion routes here, we supply a path that we want to match. And so this is going to be the default uh, path here at the top. And then we just have whatever our URL structure is going to look like. And then whenever the current URL matches one of these routes, it's going to load up the component associated with it. And so the default path here uses the app home component. If we go to forward slash profile forward slash uh, some value, in the URL, it's going to load up the app profile component. And you can see we have those components set up over here. And then you can just add as many ion routes as you want to link to different components. And so this ion router, it doesn't actually do anything in relation to the DOM. Basically, its whole purpose is just to supply information to this ion nav uh, component here. And that's what's actually uh, controlling what is being displayed on the screen. So if we match this route the ion router is going to tell ion nav that we want to load the app home component. And this is what's actually responsible for displaying it. Uh, it's not super important to know that. So let's just have a quick look at this in action. So if I jump into the browser, uh, you can see this is the uh, home page we're looking at here. So this is the app home component. And we're at the currently at the, the root of our project here, uh, the root URL. And so we should be matching up home. So this is what we'd expect to see. Uh, this is a little bit different to the normal Ionic PWA starter kit. Uh, we've added some extra things in previous videos I've done, uh, just playing around a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is the home page. And then if we click on uh, this button that navigates to the uh, profile page, you'll see up in the URL here, we have forward slash profile forward slash Ionic, which matches this path here and so it loads in the app profile component. And so anytime you wanted to create a new page, you just create a new component, uh, set up a route for it here, and then whenever you navigate to that URL, it's going to load that component. And so if you aren't familiar with this style of routing, you might not know what this uh, value here is doing, the colon, the name. Uh, basically, that's just setting up a uh, URL parameter. So if we want to pass some data through the URL, we can do that. So as you can see, if we go and click on the profile page here, we're passing Ionic into this. So the value of Ionic is being passed as the name parameter here. And so we can grab any of those. If we just take a look at the profile page, you can see we have a prop set up here for name, and that's going to grab that from the URL. Uh, but if we quickly just change this, let's do, uh, we'll just add another parameter in here. We'll say uh, Apple. So we use Apple as the parameter there. So now if we want to match this uh, this path here and load the app profile component, we're going to have to use a URL that matches this structure. So if I go into here now, you can see it says, uh, we'll, we'll go back from the start to make it more obvious. So if I click on this, you can see it says, uh, Ion route of the path, to, uh, the path does not match any route. And that's because forward slash profile, forward slash Ionic no longer matches anything. But if we do forward slash something else, we'll say ionic forward slash uh, test, that's going to match that route now. And so we can view the profile page again. And if we wanted to grab the value that we passed in there, if we just go to the app profile page, add in a new prop, 
and you'll have to make sure that you're importing prop from stencil core. We'll just call that apple as it was in the uh, route there. And it's going to be a string. And then just in the template somewhere here, let's just add it. Uh, we'll create a new paragraph. We'll add it in there. So we'll just uh, reference this dot apple. So we'll save that and check in the uh, browser again here. And you can see we have that test value popping up now. If I change this to hello, that's going to show that value there as well. So I'll just go and get rid of those values I just added. Delete that and that, and we'll change the path back to the way it was before. Okay, so this is one more thing I want to cover now. Most of the time when you navigate to another page, you're just going to use a, a simple href. Uh, so you can attach an href to a button or an anchor tag or whatever. And if we look in the homepage rather, you'll see we have a button here which just has an href that goes to profile Ionic, and that's just going to handle changing the page for you. Uh, but sometimes we do want to do a programmatic navigation. So we want to you know, perhaps have some logic around the navigation, trigger it from a function or something like that. So I've set up a, another example here. I'll just get rid of the end of that one. So this view profile function will programmatically trigger a navigation. So we can call the push method of the ion router so it's the ion router that's uh, providing this method. And then we just supply it with the path we want to go to and then the navigation direction. So that's either gonna be forward or backward uh, and that's going to apply the animation correctly. Uh, but in order to uh, get a, a reference to that router, we need to actually grab that component somehow. And so to do that, we're just using a query selector here. We've set up a class member called router, which is of a type of HTML ion router element. Uh, you don't technically have to have that there. And then we just use document.querySelector to select our ion router. And then from then on, we can just reference uh, the router by saying this.router.push, and we can push whatever path we want. And so I've set up another button there that basically does the same navigation, but it's just doing it through using that method. So I have an onClick set up here that calls this.viewProfile, which is this function. So if we just check that all works, we'll go back to the home page click on profile page and you can see both of those work. So you can either use an href or you can do that programmatic navigation as well. Okay, so that was just a quick introduction to navigation in a stencil application, specifically using the ion router, which you're going to be using if you're building an ionic PWA, for example. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please, as always, do feel free to leave a like or subscribe and I will see you in the next video.